All right, guys. So next thing we're going to do, now that we've calibrated the scope, what we'll do is we'll take a look at this uh, Festo power supply. So there's all different types of terminals here. Uh, we have AC and DC outputs. We have single phase and three phase outputs as well. So we'll go through each one sequentially. So the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll flip to this page on our lab. And so this picture corresponds to the, the power supply that we're looking at. And the first thing we're going to look at is the voltage measured from uh, positive 15 volts to zero, negative 15 volts to zero, and from positive 15 to negative 15. And then we're going to answer the question, is this voltage AC or DC? So what we'll do is uh, we'll start up or turn on our multimeter here. So we'll turn on our bench multimeter here. So turn this bad boy on. Now. You can use the uh, the normal test leads, but these are great in that um, these terminals right here will push right into uh, the power supply. So what we'll do is we'll look at the voltage between the positive 15 volts and we'll look at the voltage between there and zero volts to start off with. Now we're looking at voltage, so make sure that you are in the appropriate terminals on the meter. Okay, so we're looking at voltage here. And then this is a DC voltage that's coming out of here. So we're going to make sure that we are pressing the DC voltage. If we change it to AC voltage, then you'll see that it basically just drops down and it doesn't read anything from the output here. So this is a DC voltage output. This guy is supposed to be punching out uh, positive 15 volts between there and the common terminal there at the zero volts and that would provide us with the positive 15 and beauty we got close enough 14.939 volts this is a DC voltage okay next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, the voltage between the negative 15 volts and the zero so we'll keep this guy at the zero point plugged in We'll move this bad boy over to here to the negative, and it should be the exact same voltage, which it is. But you'll notice here that the output is now negative. So we've got negative 14.977 volts. Again, this is a DC voltage. If we change this to AC, we see nothing. Okay, so back again to DC volts, and that's our negative 14.977. If we go between uh, the two output voltages, so between the positive, sorry, the positive 15 volts and the negative 15 volts, well, that should be the combination of both of those voltages. So we're reading uh, the positive is referencing here, the negative is referencing the bottom portion. So on the meter, we should see a positive voltage coming out. And if we combine those two voltages, we should see something close to 30 volts. Beauty, that's what we're looking for. Okay. If I take those two terminals out and then switch where they're connected, so connect the red to the positive, the blue to the negative, we get the same voltage, but now it's reading a negative voltage because we've changed the polarity. Excellent. Okay, so that's your output from the first terminals here. We get, let's just take these guys out of here. Looks like we're getting uh, 15 volts between here and here, positive 15. Between here and here, we're getting negative 15. And then between these two terminals, between here and here, we're getting the combination or 30 volts DC out. Now this terminal right here does not denote that that's connected into ground. That is just the common connection, but it does not denote that we're actually connected into ground at that point. It's more of a center tap between the two voltage outputs. Okay, the next voltage looks like it's also a DC voltage, and this voltage looks like it's going to be 5 volts out. So what we'll do is we'll connect up our positive to the positive output. We'll connect up the negative to the negative output. And then we'll take a look at our multimeter here. 
Again, we're reading a DC voltage. It's supposed to be 5 volts out, so there's our 4.9997. Excellent. Now, we were referring to the positive with the red terminal. The red terminal is going to here on the meter. If we change those two leads around again, then we should see the same voltage, but the opposite polarity. There we go. So the second terminal here on our Fester power supply is providing us with 5 volts DC out. Okay, so this guy right here is giving us 5 volts DC out. The next one looks like it's also a DC output. But this line right here denotes that it's a variable output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect in the positive again to here. And we'll connect in the negative to our common. Okay, again, this does not denote that it's ground. It just denotes that it's a common point. And because this is a variable output, we can change that output by first selecting the voltage on our trainer. Right, so you can do that by pressing this knob here. As long as you are um, selecting the DC output. So by pressing this button, you can, uh, you can change the offset, the amplitude, the frequency, the waveform output, uh, but you can also change the DC output voltage. Now by pressing this, you'll now be able to adjust that voltage. So this voltage right now should be 10 volts. And looking at this symbol here, this should be 10 volts DC. So let's take a look at the meter. Ah uh, yes, 10 volts DC. Okay. Now, I can now use that selector knob and I can now increase the voltage in nice slow increments. Okay, so now I've got 12 volts DC out. Okay, looking at the display here, there's my 11.9. Focus here. There we go. So there's my 11.9, there's my 12 volts output. Okay, looking here, there's the 12 volts. Now this one it's asking us to, uh, to take a look at the maximum output voltage. So let's just keep cranking this guy until the voltage stops increasing. So that looks like the most we can get out of these two output terminals, 25.217 volts. Again, this is a DC voltage output. Okay, if we change this to AC, we're not reading anything. So, DC voltage output, but it's a variable DC out. Okay, looking at the, the terminals here, it says it's a zero to 25 volt DC output. Right, the maximum current we can get out of here is, let's just move this guy out of the way, Maximum output current we can get on these two terminals is 0.3 amps. Okay, we don't need much current on any of these trainers. More than, um, you know, more than an amp or we're going to smoke all of our components. So 0 to 25, and we can see that once I connect in those two terminals again, there's my 25 volts out. Now make sure that the polarity is correct whenever you're taking a, the meter reading. If we change these guys, then we'll get the same voltage, but we'll get the opposite polarity. So make sure that you're, you're correct on your polarity whenever you're taking meter readings on any of the labs throughout the course. Excellent. Okay, next one. We're rocking and rolling here. Next one we're going to look at is this guy right here. So this symbol right here is a symbol for a Y, and it looks like we got line 1, line 2, line 3, and neutral. We have a three phase output. Now this is not 1228, but it's seven volts or 12 volts, right? These guys look like they are an effective voltage. So they're most likely an RMS voltage that they're providing us with the seven volts or the 12 volts. If you take your calculator and you take seven volts from line to neutral, so we should read seven volts from any line to neutral. Uh, and you multiply that by root 3, 1.732, then you should find that you get 12 volts out. And that would be your line voltage from line 1 to line 2, 
line one to three, line two to three. Okay, so we have two different outputs that we can have, two different output voltages we can have. We can have our voltage from line one to neutral, and we can have line one to line two, or line two to line three, or line three to line one. So we have line voltage and we have phase voltages. This voltage right here from line to neutral is going to be our phase voltage. So that's the one we're looking at first. It's asking for line one to neutral, line two to neutral, and line three to neutral. Well, we're seeing nothing. What's going on? Well, that's an AC voltage. So let's make sure that we're pressing the appropriate voltage. And we said that that was uh, seven volts from any line to neutral. So there's our 6.8. Okay. Again, this is our voltage from line two to neutral. It's exactly the same. Take this out, put in line three to neutral, 6.8 volts as well. So any line line to neutral connection there, right? Right now we're on, um, let me just stand up here so we can see what we're doing. So right now we're on line three to neutral and we're reading 6.8 volts, okay? If we go between any of our other connections, so the lab asks us to go from line one to line two, then we should see 12 volts out. Ah, beauty, 11.85. Okay, so they're not exactly the voltages there, but they're close enough. And again, if you take the seven volts, which is your phase voltage, and multiply it by 1.732, you will get 12 volts out. Okay, again, if we go between line one and line three here, here for a minute, some of these are toit. There we go. Line one and line three, exactly the same voltage. Okay. If we go between line two and line three, exactly the same voltage. So these are our line voltages from our three phase output. And then finally, the last one we're going to look at, uh, this one is uh, number six on our lab. So we have done uh, all of these different voltages. One, two, three, four, five was the three phase output. The next one we have is a, a single phase output and it looks like we have, let's take a look at that guy. It looks like we have, again, two lines and then we've got a center tap there. The output voltage here is 18 volts. Okay, well let's take a look at this voltage here. Let's provide, put this guy in as our positive reference, right? So we're supposed to go from 18 volts to zero volts. Okay. And what's going on? That's our 12.82 volts. Okay. Well, this is telling us that it's 18 volts output, but we're only seeing 12 volts out. Well, this must be the RMS voltage then. The value that's provided on the trainer must be the peak voltage. Okay, if we take that 18 volts and multiply it by 0 0.707, then we'll most likely get a value that's close to our 12.8 out. Okay, if we now look at from the bottom connection to that center top, then that should be the same voltage. There we go. We had 12.8 before, we have 12.8 here. Okay, and then finally we're going to go from the top connection. 18 volts to the bottom connection that states 18 volts and we're at 25.5 volts again that 18 volts must be our peak voltage from line to center tap there so now we're at the difference between those guys All right so 36 volts that's 36 volts peak to peak sorry peak so 36 volts times 0 0.707 will give us a value of 25.6, or very close to that value. Excellent. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to look at uh, each of the different outputs on the scope. So what we'll do is we'll turn off our multimeter here, and we'll disconnect our connections that we had on the trainer. Now we've already calibrated this guy already, so we'll wait till it just fires up. Beauty. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, the voltage between um, 
any of these terminals here. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at the voltage between uh, the zero volts and the 15 volts. Okay, you'll notice that I'm connecting up the the ground pin here to the center tap. Good Lord. Okay, so that guy is supposed to be providing us with 15 volts out. Okay, you can see here, I'm on the times 10 scale. So each one of those solid lines on the screen or on the display is now worth 10 volts. And if we center in here, we can see that we've got a nice straight DC voltage coming out at a value of 15 volts. Okay, if I now connect in between the bottom connection and the center tap, then I have the same 15 volts but the polarity has changed. Okay, you can see here that I am between uh, the center tap and the bottom portion of the those two terminals. Okay, so center tap, hard to get connections sometimes, especially when you're trying to film at the same time. Okay, so there's our 15 volts out. Each of those solid lines is worth 10, and I'm halfway between the two sol sec the two second and the third solid line there, so I'm now at 15 volts output. DC volts. Okay. Next guy we said was uh, a five volt output. All right. Well, let's connect up the scope lead to the positive. We'll put the alligator clip to the negative here, and this is supposed to be providing us with. 5 volts out. Okay, again, I'm on the times 10. You can see that my volts per division are 1 volt. And so every solid line is worth 10 volts. And so we're at a nice straight DC voltage of 5 volts. Okay, the next one is a DC output. Remember, this is the variable output now. So we crank this all the way up to uh, 25 volts DC out. So we'll now connect up the scope lead between here and we'll put our alligator clip on the bottom here. And again, this is a nice straight line DC output. We have this cranked up to 25 volts DC out. So we have 10, 20, 25 volts DC out. Excellent. Last waveform, well, second last waveform we're going to look at is the three phase output. So, what we'll do is we'll connect up the alligator clip to the neutral. We'll connect up um, the scope probe to one of our lines. And there we've got uh, an AC waveform output. Now, we can't see the full cycle. So, if you wanted to see the full cycle, then just adjust your uh, time per division. Right. Once we change that, well, that's the wrong way, right? Because now I can't see even half of the waveform. So let's change this. Let's see. It looks like uh, five milliseconds. Okay. Beauty. So now we've got a nice sine wave output. Now this is the voltage from line three to neutral. If I look at the voltage between line one and line two, there you can see the increase in voltage there between line one and line two. Okay, if I drop it down to the line to neutral voltage, there's a line to neutral voltage. That's your phase voltage, and here is our line to line voltage. Okay, so you can draw that in on your lab. Nice waveform. Everything looks nice and smooth. When we compare this to the next output, it's interesting because the next output isn't as smooth uh, a waveform as this one. The last one we're going to look at is the single phase output. This one was the 18 volts. We saw that that was a peak voltage. So what we'll do is we'll look at the voltage between the common, or the center tap, and the 18 volts first. Okay, so we're going, sorry. Hard to film and put these bad boys in at the same time. 
Okay, so we're going between these guys. There we go. Now, it looks like um, and me trying to jam that in there, I've hit the times 10 probe. So let me just fix the times 10 probe. Beauty. There we go. So this one also outputs an AC waveform. You may be able to see, hard to make contact there. There we go. Sorry guys. Um, so you can see that it's not as clean as the other output, but there's our, uh, our line to neutral or the 18 volts to the zero volts. And then if we go to uh, the 18 volts to the other 18 volts, then we'll see a marked increase in the voltage output. And again, a nice sine wave output from this line to line. And this last connection I'm doing is from the 18 volts to the 18 volts. Okay, keep track of, uh, of which probe setting you're on. And you're also going to keep track of the volts per division. For each of these, I've been on one volt per division. I've been on the times 10 on the probe. And we're also keeping track of um, our time for division. And for each of these ones, I've been uh, basically around 2 or 5 milliseconds for each of them. Excellent. So now we've gone through all the different outputs on the, the Festo power supply. You can revisit this video again whenever you have questions on this guy. Uh, the different outputs we had were on this one we had positive and negative 15 volts out or 30 volts DC between these two terminals. On this last, this one we had 5 volts DC out. This one is a variable output, 0 to 25 volts DC. And that's changed by adjusting this knob right here. We can adjust the voltage and get nice precise voltages out. Okay. The other one we looked at was the three phase output. We looked at the line to neutral voltage and we looked at the line to line voltage. The line to neutral voltage we said was the phase voltage and the line to line voltage was our line voltage. Okay. Finally, we looked at this last single phase AC output and this guy provides us with 18 volts peak from line to neutral and then we can get 36 volts between these two points, AC output. Excellent. All right, guys. Uh, the next lab, what we're going to do is uh, next week when you come back, we'll connect up uh, this output here into our trainer, and we'll take a look at the voltages we're, we're having out uh, of this waveform here. And we'll also connect up a transformer and look at the difference between the RMS voltage and the peak voltage.